Hey everyone, this is Michael Mendes, Content Director for Gospel and Gaming. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about some interesting new developments in the game industry that have taken place over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the first is a big announcement from Nintendo. Now, Nintendo has been known for making some really innovative and risky decisions when it comes to making their consoles. You think about the Wii with its motion controls. It was a really really radical new way of playing games and it was a big hit for them for a few years and then you had their console after that the Wii U with its tablet controller that people really just didn't know what to do with and ultimately it wound up being a big failure for Nintendo well now they're making a new console and again they're going for something really risky and really innovative it's called the Nintendo Switch and it's a hybrid console something that's both portable and a home console at the same time. See, up until now, Nintendo's been making two consoles at the same time. They've been making a home console, something that you play at home on your couch in front of your TV, and then a portable console, something that you take with you. You can fit it into your pocket or into a backpack and you can do gaming on the go. This new console, the Switch, is a combination of the two. Basically, it's a tablet that has these two little detachable controllers, one on either side of the tablet. When you want to play it at home, you set it into this docking station that's hooked up to your TV. You can take the little controllers off of the tablet and you can play it on your couch. And then when you want to take it on the go, you put the controllers back on, you take it out of the docking station, and now it's something you can carry with you. The image will go from the TV screen back onto the tablet screen. It's a really interesting idea and I think in at least one way it's a really good idea on paper anyway. And one of the problems that Nintendo had with the Wii U was that there weren't many games coming out for it. They had a lot of trouble getting their own games, the ones that Nintendo themselves are making, out on time and then other developers really weren't interested in making games for it either. But the 3DS actually had a lot of other people making games for it, in addition to what Nintendo was making. And if this new console is going to be a successor to both the 3DS and the Wii U, there should be a lot of support, not only from third-party developers who were making games on the 3DS beforehand, but then also with Nintendo, now they're not splitting their resources between two consoles. Now they're making all of their games for one platform. So in theory, there should be a pretty robust lineup of games coming out for the new console. And there are still some unanswered questions about this new device, uh, chief among them perhaps being the battery life. How long will you be able to play this new device before the batteries run out? And then of course the price. Uh, but the device isn't out until uh, March of next year, so Nintendo still has some time. We should hear some more stuff in January from what I've heard. So it's really interesting, and I think it's something that's worth keeping an eye on. The other thing I wanted to talk about today is a strike. There's a voice actor strike that's going on just recently. Uh, the union that represents the voice acting talent in the industry has announced that they are uh, on strike against about nine different companies, including some really prominent publishers like EA, the makers of Battlefield, uh, Activision, the makers of Call of Duty, Take-Two, the people who make Grand Theft Auto. Uh, voice actors uh, had an old contract that had been around for about 20 years, and that ran out in 2014, and they've been in negotiations uh, since then, so for about a year and a half, I think, and even after all that time, the two sides have been unable to reach an agreement. There have been a number of prominent voice actors and actresses who have uh, spoken out in favor of the strike, including uh, people like Jennifer Hale, who's known for the Mass Effect series, among other games, uh, David Hayter, who's been known for doing voice work in the Metal Gear Solid franchise, another really popular gaming series. Uh, but then again, I've also heard that the union only represents about 25% of the voice acting talent in the industry. So I have to wonder how much bargaining power this union really has. Will they be able, be able to find support among people who aren't in the union, who might be willing to stand in support anyway? Um, I don't know. 
we at Gospel and Gaming have been talking recently about some of the growing pains that the industry has been facing due to just the expansion of the industry, how many people are playing, the amount of money that goes into these things, and the amount of money that they make. I think one of the, the growing pains is it's kind of inevitable that you'll wind up with conflicts like these. And hopefully, in this particular case, the union and the companies will be able to find an agreeable resolution soon, and they'll just be able to shift their focus back on to uh, doing the things they love. And that's about it. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll visit us at gospelandgaming.net. We've got new content coming out every week. If you want more information on the stuff I talked about today, there are some descriptions down below about Nintendo and about the voice actor's strike. Uh, have a good one.